You're watching Power Nation. When it comes to LS engines, there's a hundred different ways that you can build them. Ours is a unique combination of style and substance. What you're looking at is an iron LS block that we pulled from a salvage yard. And today on Engine Power, you're going to see us transform this into 410 cubic inches of fury and beauty. Now, looking at this engine from a distance, it's pretty clear that it's a used engine. But if you start looking closer, it's actually extremely clean. And the reason for that is that this is a remanufactured engine. With a lot of these LS-powered cars getting up there in age, it's going to be really common to find rebuilt or remanufactured engines in place of the original. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. As we were tearing this down, this engine has very minimal wear and is very clean. There's not a lot of sludge in the oil pan or in the crankcase. The cylinder wall finish looks excellent and it's already been oversized 40 thousandths or one millimeter over the stock four inch bore. So it's pretty clear that this engine hasn't had a lot of miles on it yet. But if you weren't going to tear it down and you're trying to determine if it's a remanufactured engine, a pretty easy way to figure that out is by looking at the cylinder case or the cylinder head and looking for one of these guys. And this is a heat tab that's placed there by the rebuilders or the remanufacturers when the engine leaves, so that if it ever returns for warranty work, they can clearly look at it and see if the engine has been overheated while in use. Another clear indicator of a remanufactured engine is that a lot of the exterior bolts will be painted. Things like main bolts, timing cover bolts, all kinds of things will have a unique color on them. And this is gonna be an awesome foundation. It's kind of a score to get from a junkyard, but it's gonna work great for our 410 cubic inch stroker that's gonna look like a jewel. We like all of our builds to look great, but because of the induction package we're gonna be using on this particular one, it's gonna look spectacular. We'll get to that in a second. This build is based off an LQ9 short block. We did that because we want the big bore. You could do this exact same build on a 4.8 or a 5.3. It just won't give you the same amount of cubic inches that we can get when we use the bigger bore. So what we're gonna be using is an entire line of parts that were specifically created for this platform, and it is called Pro LS. Summit has gone through the trouble to make pro grade parts for the LS platform and it all starts out with their crankshaft. This is forged out of 4340 steel and it comes in a variety of different strokes depending on your needs. This one is four inch stroke. That's how we're going to get that 410 cubic inches. That is going to be pushing around some forged pro LS pistons that they had created. These have a 8cc effective dish, a 927 pin. They are forged out of 2618 alloy, have an anti-friction coating on the skirt, and they have a 1.2, 1.2, 3 millimeter ring pack. They also come with heavy duty 150 wall wrist pins. Moving on to the connecting rods, another great Pro LS part. These are an H beam design with a 6, 125 center to center length. These have a full floating bushing 927 small end, and the big end are held together by quality ARP 2000 rod bolts. These parts came as a full rotating assembly, which comes with bearings, rings, and everything that you see here. Now, they come in different sizes, again, depending on what you wanna build. So, next we'll move on to the induction side, which starts with the camshaft. Summit has also gone ahead and had their own camshafts designed for their Pro LS line. This particular cam that we chose for ours has a duration of 234 at 50 on the intake, 248 on the exhaust, and it has 114 degrees of lobe separation angle. The lift at the valve is 625 on the intake and 605 on the exhaust with a stock 1.7 ratio. This camshaft is going to be moving some serious air via our cylinder head. This is a TrickFlow Gen X 255. Now these are a serious player right out of the box. 382 CFM at 700 lift through a 255 cc intake port. They have a 2165 intake valve. 1600 exhaust housed in a fully CNC'd 69cc chamber. The springs are already set up for our hydraulic roller application, so we are all set there. And you might say, where is the intake manifold? I don't see one sitting here. Well, there is where it gets unique. We have an ITB set up. This is an EFI, ITB meaning individual throttle body. This is from Speedmaster. Instead of having a common plenum, we have eight injector stacks that go right to the individual runners for the ultimate in tunability. 
These have a 50 millimeter throttle body and it is a sequential EFI that is going to be controlled with our Fitech Ultima LS EFI kit. This is a self-learning kit that is programmable very intuitively through a handheld. It's gonna make it easy to get running and easy to tune once it is running. We also have picked up a set of their coils to go with it. Now this is a lot of parts and there's even more. So we got to get moving on this. So the first thing we have to do is get some block prep done. And that's up next. Coming up, we'll show you how a torque plate helps us get rid of nasty distortions in the cylinders of an engine block. Plus, we give the crankshaft a next level balancing job. In today's Summit Tech Tip, we're going to talk about something that is vitally important to understanding how your engine's running. And to do that, we have one of our good buddies, Clay Milliken, a top fuel driver. Clay, O2 sensors are extremely important in fuel injection applications, but you can also use them in carbureted applications too, right? Oh, 100%. These things are really valuable just to get your tune-up kind of all pulled in together where it's nice and, and the engine's running very even. You can do anything from OE to the wide band right at Summit Racing. Call the guys, they can tell you what you need. They'll get you fixed right up. Yeah, and just as important as a good sensor is also the correct installation to get accurate readings, right? And they're not as hard to install as you might think. I mean, if you can weld, you can do the weld-in bung, or if not, they've got to simple drill a hole, put a couple clamps on, and you're good to go. Yeah, I mean, you guys probably aren't running these on a top fuel car, but for the everyday hot rodder, Summit Racing has the parts, the tools, and the tech you need to get them in, right? Everything from OE replacement to the hot rod side of it, they've got the parts you need. You just got to call the experts at Summit Racing. Before we can start the buildup of our Stroker 6 liter, we have to finish disassembly. The next thing out is this stock camshaft that looks great, but will be replaced by the Racier Pro LS design. To get to the rotating assembly, we'll remove the factory windage tray. Then we can take out the rod and piston assemblies one by one. Since this is a remanufactured engine, we expected the bearings to look pretty good, but these look brand new. A nifty item to make disassembly easier is this Summit Pro LS main cap removal tool. Not horrible. We'll start cleaning the block by scraping off any leftover gasket material. Then we can deburr the block, starting with a small hand file on the main cap registers. We're just making a quick pass to soften the edges. We'll repeat the process on the main caps. The rest of the block can be deburred with an air grinder and various carbide bits. The final step is chamfering every hole in the block. Now that Frankie has the block all nice and deburred, we threw it in the cleaner to knock the heavy chunks off. Then we took it out and put it back on a stand and installed the main caps and torqued them to spec. That's very important. Now we have the block in our Sunnen SV15 ready to straighten out the cylinders. And we're gonna be honing this block again with a torque plate like we always do. Any block can benefit from a torque plate, no matter the design. When the head is bolted on, it distorts the cylinder somewhat. Some are better than others. What I'm gonna show you is on our particular block, how much the block moves around when a cylinder head torque plate is bolted on. With our sun and dial bore gauge zeroed to the size of our pistons, we'll take several measurements along the thrust axis in the bore. Then we'll take measurements at the same depth, but 90 degrees offset from the thrust face. Without a torque plate, it has a maximum out of round of nine ten thousandths. Using the same style of MLS gasket as one will use during the installation, the torque plate is tightened in three stages to a final value of 90 pound feet. We'll repeat the measurements, getting a maximum out of round of 34 ten thousandths. Nasty. To correct that craziness, 
and to set our piston to cylinder wall clearance to what we need for our application, we will hone up the bores to a final bore size of 40427 with our 220 grit diamond abrasive. It takes a while to get there and we'll check our progress often as we go. The chatter you hear also shows up on the sun and screen as a jagged pattern. As the cylinder becomes round and straight, we can see the improvement in the readout. Much better. Once we get the final bore size, we'll switch to a 600 grit finishing stone to set the proper plateau finish on the cylinder. This only takes five strokes at 11% load to achieve. You can see that the cylinder is now straight and round within two ten thousandths. To verify the correct surface profile, we'll measure with our profilometer. We can analyze the results with our Trace Boss software that we got from Total Seal Piston Rings. Up next, we get the crankshaft dialed in and put together a precision rotating assembly. We're continuing on the build of our 410 cubic inch LS, and the next thing we're gonna be doing is balancing the rotating assembly, and it's really awesome that we can do this in-house on our CWT Multibal 5500. Now, like we said, this rotating assembly was a Pro LS kit from Summit, and it was specifically designed for six liter engines to turn them into 410 cubic inches. And all the components were designed to work together, so we know this crank isn't gonna be too far out, and it should be pretty easy to bring it within our balance tolerance. Speaking of components and weights, we've already gone through, weighed all of our components, like the rods, pistons, rings, and bearings, and the machine will actually take all of those weights and build a bob weight card for us. So since we are using a 90 degree V8 configuration, we have a 50% reciprocating factor and a target bob weight of 1800.8 grams, which is pretty on par for this combination. We've already built all of our bob weights, installed them on the crank, and we have centered them on the rod journals using CWT's nifty alignment tool. We are gonna start by spinning this crank at 500 RPM like we do with all of our combinations that are brand new, just to make sure that nothing is crazy. And then once we know that the balance is not too far out, we can step it up to 750 RPM to get a more accurate reading. So we'll do our first spin and see what we get. Okay, that's, like we said, this is not gonna be that far out. So that's, that's pretty indicative of what you would normally have on this kind of setup. 10.277 grams on the rear and 9.347 on the front. Uh, we can definitely bring that within our tolerance pretty easy. So we're not gonna have to do anything crazy to get this crank balanced, uh, but we'll get to work on it and get it within our tolerance. For the front, we'll use a grinder to remove most of the material that we need from the counterweights and a flap disc to clean up the surface. On the rear, we'll use the drill head mounted to the machine to drill a half inch hole in the center of the counterweight. We'll go slowly and spin the crankshaft several times until we get it where we want it. All right, so that is awesome. That's right what we were looking for. 0.110 ounce inch on the left, 0.112 on the right. And if we look at the force on the center of the crank, we're at 0.061 ounce inch. So that's awesome. That's right what we were looking for. And that eighth ounce inch might seem a little extreme to a lot of you. Back in the day, quarter ounce inch was generally held as the standard for high performance and racing vehicles. But nowadays with modern technology like knock sensors, a lot of factory cars come even way lower than that. And it becomes really apparent the effects that that has on the crank when we start looking at the force. And this machine will actually calculate it for you 
when we started, only if this crank turned 6,000, it would have 80 pounds of force on it every revolution. And now that we have actually bounced the crank within our tolerance at 6,000, we only have seven pounds of force on the crank on the left side. So literally more than 10 times less. And that's not only gonna be great for the crank, but all the parts that swing around it. So this is awesome. We're very happy with this. We're gonna get it off the machine, get it polished, get it final cleaned, and then it'll be ready for final assembly. With the block final cleaned and the torque plate reinstalled, we can file our Summit Pro LS piston rings. This is a 1.2 millimeter, 1.2 millimeter, 3 millimeter ring pack with a Napier style second ring and a gas nitrided steel top ring. Using our Summit Pro ring filer and following the very extensive instructions that came with the rings, we'll set the top ring gap at 23 thousandths and the second ring gap at 25 thousandths. Because the torque plate is installed, we'll use one of the Summit pistons with the oil control pack in it to square the rings in the bore. The key to keeping your vehicle running like it's supposed to is regular maintenance. Changing the fluids, the belts, the hoses, the plugs, the filters, things like that. But sometimes the fuel system will get neglected. But Hot Shot Secrets Gasoline Extreme Concentrated One Tank Cleaner can help you out with that. It contains a highly effective PEA detergent to clean deposits found everywhere like injectors, your carburetor, intake valves, and combustion chambers. They have infused it with their LX4, which provides lubricity more than any other additive on the market and it reduces wear in the entire system. One 16 ounce bottle treats up to 45 gallons of gasoline and that includes gasoline with a high ethanol content. It dissolves gums and varnish in the system which can help smooth idle, improve emissions, and reduce wear by over 60%. It is safe with all emissions equipment and this will help improve performance by improving acceleration and reducing misfires. As an added bonus, it provides corrosion protection for the entire fuel system. All that combined can help keep your fuel system in tip top shape. And don't think they have forgot about the diesel crowd. Their Diesel Extreme Concentrate also has Cetane Booster to improve performance. For more information on these and other products, check out Hot Shot Secrets website. Up next, we'll install a rotating assembly that provides great bang for the buck. With everything final cleaned, we can begin assembly by measuring our main bearing vertical oil clearance. These Clevite H-Series standard bearings came in our Summit Pro LS kit. The main caps are installed and torqued into place with a used set of torque to yield main bolts. We'll use a new set of fasteners during final assembly. Torque to yield fasteners can generally be retorqued up to two times, and we will torque these following GM's specification. With the dial bore gauge zeroed to the main journal size, we can measure our main bearing oil clearance. They all come in between 27 and 29 ten thousandths. The next thing we're gonna do is set the rod bearing oil clearance for our Stroker LS. And we're gonna be doing that with our Summit Pro LS rods that we told you about earlier. But one of the major reasons that we picked that rotating assembly for this engine is because it came with ARP rod bolts. And ARP has been supplying quality rod bolts for the industry for a long time. And we have used them in a ton of builds with great success. For this specific build, this kit came with an ARP 2000 rod bolt, and that is an alloy that ARP created that is way stronger than an OE bolt and even way stronger than an 8740 chrome molly bolt. It has a tensile strength of around 220,000 PSI and can have a fatigue strength up to 20 times stronger than other rod bolts. That makes it the go-to rod bolt for mild to high performance builds that are gonna see abuse. They're made with the same high quality metallurgy and machining processes that ARP uses on all of their fasteners. And that is why companies love working with ARP for high quality fasteners in engine components. And these are specced out perfectly for our build and they're gonna allow it to live a long and happy life being thrashed on the street. Before installing the rod bolts, we will generously apply ARP ultra torque lubricant under the heads and on the threads. Following Summit Racing's detailed instructions, we will torque the rod bolts to 82 pound-feet. We use our sun in dial bore gauge to measure our rod bearing oil clearance, which is between 27 and 29 ten thousandths. After coating the main bearings in assembly lube, the crankshaft is tenderly laid into place. 
the bearings and the caps are lubed as well and installed, making sure they're in the correct location and orientation. In order to align the thrust bearing surfaces, the crank is wedged forward with a screwdriver and the new Summit Torque to Yield main fasteners are tightened to the specified 15 pound feet. Then the inner bolts are tightened another 80 degrees, while the outers are tightened another 51 degrees. With a small amount of sealer on the side bolts, they can be torqued to 18 pound feet. To assemble the rods and pistons, we slather on assembly lubricant before slipping the wrist pin into the bore. The wrist pins are held in place with high performance spiral locks. After installing the oil ring support rail, the rest of the ring pack can be put into place following Summit's instructions. The pistons receive a coating of Total Seal Assembly Lube and they are tapped into the block with a Summit Adjustable Piston Ring Compressor. The rod bolts are torqued to 82 pound-feet. To ensure the bolts achieve proper clamp load, we'll check the rod bolt stretch with the ARP gauge. All right. I always feel way better once we have the rotating assembly bolted into the engine for real. It means we're making some actual progress. And these Summit Pro LS rotating assemblies are awesome. Summit did a great job with them. They always go together really nice. And as a bonus, they're not gonna break the budget. We have run out of real estate for today, but that doesn't mean we are done. The next time you see it, we're getting very serious. The camshaft is going in, the cylinder heads, the valve train, and some trick induction. And this thing is going to be on our Superflow making some power. Now, this thing's not only gonna run good, it's gonna look good too. And if you wanna see the rest of this build or any of the other builds we do here in Engine Power, you can always find us at Power Nation. Today on Engine Power, we build a six liter LS into a stroker street rod. This thing will shine on the engine stand and in the dyno cell. Hey everyone, welcome to Engine Power. Today is going to be a great day because we are continuing on the build up of our 410 cubic inch LQ9 LS build. Now it may look a little bit different from last time you saw it. We got a little bit of paint on it. But the plan for today is to get this thing all finished up, bolted together and get it on our Superflow Power Mark dyno and get making some horsepower. So to get it to the point where it looks now, you have to check this out. We started with a clean remanufactured block and honed the bores to a final size of 40027. Then we balanced the Summit Pro LS rotating assembly to better than 8 ounce inch on the right and left side, which drastically reduces the force on the center of the crank. The piston rings were filed to 23 thousandths on the top, and the second rings were gapped to 25 thousandths. The crankshaft, rods, and pistons are fully forged and ready to handle the horsepower we plan to make. Now that we have that Summit Pro LS rotating assembly in our engine, we have a rock solid foundation for our 410 cubic inch pump gas cruiser. And the next thing we're gonna do is button up the front end. So we had to get a camshaft. We went right to the Summit Racing catalog to pick out one of their Pro LS camshafts for this application. It actually has similar specs to ones we've used in the past with similar combinations. It has durations at 50 thousandths lift of 234 degrees on the intake and 248 degrees on the exhaust. The lobes are set on a 114 degree lobe separation angle with three and a half degrees of advanced ground in. Lift at the valve with the Summit upgraded Pro LS rockers is gonna be 625 thousandths on the intake and 605 thousandths on the exhaust. And to turn that camshaft, we're gonna be using one of Summit's double roller timing sets. And these are billet gears and the top gear has a single tooth reluctor built into it with a Torrington bearing on the back. The crank gear has nine keyway positions so we can adjust the cam timing for where we want in this engine. It also comes with the oil pump drive, the chain, and these nifty spacers to space out the oil pump because of that double roller design. Speaking of oil pump, we're gonna be using a new one for this build, a new Summit Racing oil pump to make sure we have adequate oil flow to the engine. Now that's a ton of great parts on this table, but they don't do us any good there. So let's get them in our engine. You ready? What? Oh, yep, let's go.
These ARP cam bolts are temporarily installed so we can degree our camshaft. Because this is a street show car engine, we'll advance the cam to move the power band lower in the RPM range. We'll set the intake center line at 107 and a quarter, which is six and three quarter degrees advanced. Then the ARP bolts are torqued to 25 pound feet. The new oil pump is installed and aligned with one and a half thousand feeler gauges before being torqued to 30 pound feet. The next step is installing the factory windage tray with 130 thousandths thick shims so it clears our longer four inch stroke. After pre-lubing the oil pump, we'll install this Summit Racing pickup that came as part of an oil pan swap kit. For this build, we're going for a very particular look, polished and machined aluminum throughout the engine. And we wanted fasteners that were gonna live up to that look, and that's why we're using ARP stainless steel fasteners throughout this build. We could use these stock original fasteners, but they don't look very good. And you could paint them. We've all been there wire wheeling the heads of bolts, putting them through a piece of cardboard and spraying them. But eventually corrosion is gonna make its way through that paint, it's gonna bubble up, and you're gonna have rusty bolts as well. You could even use a grade eight bolt. These come with a gold zinc coating to prevent rust from happening. But there's a two problems with that. One, the gold doesn't really look that great. And also when the fastener is installed, if that zinc coating is broke, it's gonna allow corrosion to get in there and again, rust the head of the fastener. We don't have that problem when we use ARP stainless steel bolts because they're made entirely from stainless steel. So they won't rust and they won't corrode, but they're also extremely strong. They have a tensile strength between 170 and 190,000 PSI, which is still way stronger than a grade eight fastener. And all of the ARP stainless fasteners have that strength. To make them really pop, ARP even polishes every single stainless fastener before it leaves. And they offer them in bulk fasteners or in engine specific kits. And we have a bunch of these here that are specific to our LQ9 and we're gonna be using them throughout the build to make sure that our fasteners don't let down that polished look. Using this timing cover alignment tool, we can bolt down the Summit two-piece polished timing cover. From the factory, these LSs come with a plastic barbell that helps connect some of the oil passages, but the plastic can get brittle over time and break, and they're very hard to remove. So we're gonna be replacing that with a Summit Racing billet aluminum one that has a threaded hole for easy removal. Even the bolts that you can't see, like these rear cover bolts, are being replaced with quality ARP stainless fasteners. Finally, the rest of the Summit pan kit is installed using the Goodson straight edge to align the rear of the pan with the bell housing. Coming up, a unique induction system and self-learning EFI setup deliver the goods on the engine dyno. When assembling valve train, you'll often hear us use the term preload or lifter preload. And in today's Summit Tech Tip, we wanted to take a second to explain what that means. There are two types of lifters, solid, which has a solid steel body and no give to it, and hydraulic. And hydraulic lifters have an internal piston that rides over top an oil cavity, and that oil cavity gives a hydraulic cushion to the valve train. OEs develop this mostly for quieter valve train and easier maintenance. And usually there is a spring underneath this piston, but the spring is not what provides that cushion. It is the oil cavity underneath. The spring simply keeps the piston at the top of its travel when there's no oil in the system, like when the engine is sitting. And in order to make this work correctly, the piston has to be preloaded a certain amount into its travel to make sure that it can operate correctly when the engine is running. And there's two ways that we can set that preload. If we have an adjustable rocker like this stud mount one here, we can use the adjuster nut to set the correct amount of preload, which is generally between 50 and 100 thousandths. 
but if we have a bolt down rocker like this LS one here, then we have to do that with push rod length. And that's why it's really critical that when we're measuring push rod length, we incorporate the amount of preload that we need in the lifter to make sure we're getting the correct push rod length for the application. And if you have any questions on how hydraulic lifters work, what parts you need, or how to get the correct preload, you can always reach out to the experts at Summit Racing Equipment and they'll get you sorted out. The Pro LS build continues with a set of Comp Evolution hydraulic roller lifters. These have an internal serviceable hydraulic cartridge for increased stability under load. The trays are torqued in place to 106 pound inches. A Cometic MLS head gasket with a 4060 bore and a 27 thousandths compressed thickness gives us a measured compression ratio of 11.13 to 1. They are sealing up these TrickFlow Gen X 255 LS3 cylinder heads. The ARP head bolts are torqued in three stages to a final value of 90 pound-feet. The 8mm bolts are torqued to 25 pound-feet. The TrickFlow 7700 long push rods are treated with extreme pressure lube and slid into place. This TrickFlow rocker stand is included and is specific to the Gen X 255 cylinder head. The ARP rocker studs receive sealer because they thread into the intake ports. The Summit Racing rocker arms come with upgraded trunnions for more travel and durability. They're installed in the firing order of the engine and torqued to 25 pound-feet. A healthy coating of Comp Cam's valve train assembly spray comes next, followed by a set of polished Summit Racing valve covers. So we have our stock valley cover plate laid in place here, and if you've noticed, we've actually plugged the rear cam sensor hole. We're gonna be converting this engine to a front cam sensor. So we're just plugging this hole with an ICT billet cam sensor plug from Summit Racing Equipment. And the reason we're doing that is because it actually won't clear this cover for the valley cover that came with the Speedmaster ITB kit. And this not only looks good and is polished to cover up the stock cover, but also it will run the throttle linkage for our ITB setup. So it not only matches the polished look of the engine, but serves a purpose. To connect the steam ports of the engine, we'll use this TrickFlow kit, which uses full AN fittings. The party piece of this power plant is the Speedmaster electronic stack injection system. It's designed for LS3 style heads and it will perform as good as it looks. Ooh, fancy. Up next, our LS gets a fantastic front drive and an easy standalone EFI system. Since we pulled our 6 liter out of the junkyard, there's really no telling how old the sensors that came with it are. And that means we're not going to take a chance on those. We're going to be replacing them with ones from Duralast. And we chose the Duralast brand because they have a commitment to making high quality sensors for vehicles. And they do that by going in and actually making changes to the sensor to make sure that they can fix OE problems. And then they extensively test them to make sure those problems are fixed for good. And they do that by testing them in the same stress environments that you would see in a vehicle. High vibration, extreme heat, and extreme cold. The three things that kill sensors most commonly. And they do that to make sure that they're going to survive under the hood of your car. And speaking of vehicles, they offer a ton of different sensors for a bunch of different applications. So they have over 750 different electronic part types and over 100,000 part numbers. So the chances are they have the sensor or part that you're looking for. Now for our engine, we're gonna be using Duralast crank and cam sensors, but Duralast also offers a gold line. And that is what we're gonna be using for our coolant temp sensor. And the great thing about the gold line is it comes with that same high quality sensor but it also comes with a pigtail with the correct connector and a splice kit so if that connector is damaged broken or burnt in the vehicle you don't have to hunt one down and try and repin it you can simply splice a new connector onto it and this is going to be perfect for our engine because now we have some high quality sensors for our high performance bullet 
Now is a great time to install these sensors while they're easy to get to on the engine stand. We'll dyno this engine with a full accessory drive that we got from Summit Racing, and the heart of it is this ATI harmonic damper. It's a billet specialties kit that includes this Edelbrock cartridge style water pump and fully polished bracketry. In fact, almost everything is fully polished, which makes this front drive perfect for our engine. With this thing looking like a dime, it's ready for dyno time. Because our stack injection is electronic fuel injected, we're going to need an aftermarket standalone ECU to run the engine. So we're going to be using this Fitech Ultimate LS kit. This comes with everything you need to swap an LS into a vehicle. It comes with a complete main harness that's fully terminated and labeled, so it's really easy to install. An oxygen sensor to go into the exhaust so we can monitor the AFRs a three bar map sensor for forced induction applications and a precise and easy to follow instruction manual. So it just makes it really simple to get this kit installed on your engine. It comes with a handheld controller that you can do all of the setup and tuning with. If you're not that familiar with EFI, that's awesome, makes it really easy. We're gonna be complementing this kit with a set of their 55 pound an hour injectors, which is enough fuel for about 700 horsepower and a set of their smart coils, which look awesome and have great spark energy. So we'll get all this installed on our engine and we'll be one step closer to starting it. The Fitech coils bolt on using an LS3 design, which matches our valve covers. These polished fuel rails came with the Speedmaster ITB setup. All it takes is a few simple connections and our Fitech system is installed. To light the air fuel mixture coming into the cylinder, we contacted our friends at E3 and picked up a set of their Diamond Fire Performance spark plug wires and a set of spark plugs. The spark plug wires are made right here in the USA out of premium components. They exceed OEM specifications, have a three-part core and a three-part insulation that makes them extra heavy duty and very low resistance. And less resistance means more energy to the spark plugs. Speaking of spark plugs, we picked up a set of their Diamond Fire spark plugs as well. Diamond Fire Technology has been out a long time and it is a proven performer and it was easy for us to find the heat range that we needed for our application. So if you have something that takes a spark plug, chances are E3 has a part number for you. So from their wires to their plugs to anything else, go check out E3. Up next, we see what our polished power plant produces in the dyno cell. All right, it is finally time for some dynamic, and this is our favorite time. It was very easy to get our 410 lit. The Fitech was very intuitive with the handheld, just a few parameters, and it fired right up. So the first thing we're gonna do is make a keep its guts pull. It's more like a make sure everything is okay pull, but I like to say keep its guts, because that's what we're trying to do. It's gonna tell us a few things, make sure our air fuel ratio is right, make sure our timing is close, and make sure our pulley setup is all tracking true. So everything looks good. Uh, I think it's ready. Here we go. Light it. I like how it looks awesome, oh, yeah. but it also sounds awesome. It runs great. Um, I mean, we're gonna see what this thing can do here in a second. Uh, so we're gonna go 2,500 to 5,500 at 600 RPM a second, just to make sure everything's good and uh, should be okay. Yeah, uh, with, with the ITV, you know, we haven't done, I, I mean, I haven't done one quite like this one. Yep. Very easy to set up. Everything was, uh, was actually yeah. relatively simple. Our, front pulley system. I love dynoing with a full accessory system. Yeah, it's like a true number, you know, like we can sure. dyno it with an electric water pump, but this gives us an actual number. Like this thing's ready to go in the car, so this is what it'll make when it gets in the car. And yeah, that stack injection looks awesome. I've never done an EFI one, so yeah. this is all pretty new, but so far it's very smooth. It runs great, so uh, let's, let's see what it does. Yeah, just uh, yeah, go easy on her. Yeah. No hiccups. No. Wow, that's smooth. That's really smooth. Smooth, right through and the pool. Look at that right there. Nice. Okay, so 518 for torque and 538 for power. And we're, we're stopping at 5500, yeah. so that power is still trending up. But uh, 
Oil pressure is going up, 70 PSI at the top of the pool, so that looks great. Air fuels look good side to side, and they're holding pretty steady all the way through, yep. so. Wow, I'm, that, I feel good about that. You wanna make a real pool let's, let's do a real pool. So um, normally I like starting something like this at like 3,000. Yeah, and, uh, probably I like. With, with how far the cam is advanced on this one, uh, 6,500 for the top end. Yep, that's what I was gonna. That's what I was thinking because okay. this thing's not gonna. It's not gonna turn a bunch of RPM because it's a street engine. So we jack the cam pretty far forward. Yeah. Keep the power in a manageable low RPM range. So, three to 6,500 at 300 a second. Wow. Loads right in. That's crazy. Decent right there. That's clean. 572.1 right at 6400. So yeah, right there under that seat. You know, we were thinking it was gonna be right there. So 6400. for torque. Yeah, that's a nice torque curve too. Over 450 pound feet everywhere on the graph. Wow. 520 at 5100. Nice. Nice. I mean, that's a that's a great street engine curve right there. It's nice, nice and, and smooth. Yep. No 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 off. weird holes in it or anything like that. Wow. Okay, so. Wow, that's that's really solid. And we're pretty safe on the tune-up still, so do you want to make some adjustments and see if we can tweak a little I bit mean, more? I mean, I think, uh, uh, I mean, if you if you stop there, you'd be fine, but why, yeah. why stop there? We uh, we, we have a dyno, so let's uh, let's, yeah. make, let's make a couple of uh, fuzzes on it and see what we can get, so. Awesome. Over the course of several dyno runs, we'll use SpyTech's self-learning unit to make precise changes to the engine so it runs at peak performance. And our final tune-up now is 28 degrees of timing and a target air fuel ratio of 12.8 to 1. Yep. That's kind of what we decided where to stop, where this engine really, you know, kind of peaked over, and there's no point in pushing it any harder for, no, for I, what it is. You no, know? absolutely not. This isn't a race engine. This no. is a street rod engine that looks kind of racy and runs really racy. <laughs> looks good. It looks really good. Makes good power. Yeah, but, uh, makes great power. All right, cool. let's see, uh, see what we can squeeze out of this thing here. That's pretty mean. Oh. 590 horse. That is crazy. 523 pound feet. Wow. That is a hydraulic roller street engine yeah. with a relatively small hydraulic roller, you know. And that is that's pretty good power. Nice, smooth, there's no dips, nothing weird in it. Two, I mean, that's two thirties awesome at engine. 50 hydraulic roller. Yeah. I mean looks awesome. Looks All awesome. polished accessories. Yeah, accessory drive is uh form always follows function, yeah. right? So I, I we love everything looking good, yep. but this one was a little bit a little bit uh to a different level yeah. just because of all the, the shiny polishing yep. stuff. So. And it looks cool with like the Phytec coils. You can see them yeah. flashing the whole time. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's just an added bonus. But Yeah, no, uh, ha hats off to Phytec. Everything went smooth. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, I cannot wait to see this in something, to it, be it, honest. It, this is, this is going to look good in the engine bay of something. Yeah. So no, uh, that's awesome. All right. Yeah, good job. Great success. For more information about this build or any of our other cool builds, please check out Power Nation.